Shame creates fear. It's a, it's a dense energy, just like ice, right? Ice is water. You want ice to turn into water? You let it melt. Just let nature do what it does. But shame is like a freezer getting on ice, saying, turn into water. You're keeping me ice. I really had um, a wall of revelations this week. I was working with someone, um, I don't know, middle of the week. And she was talking to me about how she said, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out the right way to present what her company was. And I said, how do you measure the wrong way? And I was usually going to go to, um, to the world of like, you know, the wrong way is it's measured by it doesn't pay money or it, it, you know, you don't get people to like you or whatever. And she said, no, it's that I could fail God. She said that the, the wrong way is that I could fail God. <clears throat> Before I even go into this, does anyone have that thought? Like I could upset God. And that's not only just I could fail God, like whatever that looks like, but um, that you're like, I didn't get my life out the exact right way. I'm going to disappoint God, right? I didn't get all my shit out. I didn't get my voice out. I didn't make enough change, whatever it is. Right. And my instant answer to her was, oh, you have a God that can be disappointed in you. You have a God that can feel shame. You have a God that punishes you. You have a God that's angry. And maybe I took for granted that the God that I've created, how I see God, is it's always ascending. You know, maybe sometimes God goes, yeah, you, if you need to karmatically live something out or go through something to see that it doesn't align for you, like you can maybe pause on your way up, maybe go hang out with that person, you know, doesn't align for you or eat that bad food or, or stay in the thing that doesn't feel like you're calling. But overall, we go up, we always ascend. I realized her God maybe goes linear and sometimes drops and tries to go back up to linear, right? Can you feel this? What's your God do? And is it your God or is it patterns you learned? Right? Like, do you have a fear of doing it the wrong way? Then how you see the world is there's a wrong way. And maybe your parents said you better do it the right way. Otherwise, you're not enough. Otherwise, we abandon you. Otherwise, you're shamed. Otherwise, whatever. And then we got to do it the right way out of a giant fear of not enoughness. Let's just be with that for a second, because I'm going to really kind of talk about this. Talk about shame. Shame doesn't work. If you want to change your behavior and you shame yourself, it doesn't change it. You just feel shamed. You just temporarily sit there under your own shame or someone else's shame. And maybe you'll temporarily change something quickly just to shut that shame up. But it has nothing to do with your heart's desire to change. right? Your heart's desire might change. Like someone might go, well, punishment does work. You put someone in jail for 20 years and they change their patterns. Yeah, but jail isn't the factor. It's that their consciousness shifted, right? For instance, there's a lot of people that shame themselves. A very, very common one. I know I have many times in my life. One area that I've shamed myself is eating. So I know there's a me that's like, you will not eat this way. You are, you know, it's not that I think I'm bad for eating that, but it's just like, why do I do that? Why did I do that? That's, that's a thing that I used to say to myself a lot, you know, I eat a bunch of fried food and then I'm like, why did I do that? You can almost hear as you say, why did I do that to yourself? A parent saying the same thing that your parent would say that. Why do you always do this? Right. 
And the reason I said God at the beginning is sometimes we think our God moves the way that we heard our parents talk, right? Everyone kind of makes a God in their image, right? So if you grew up in a house where all you heard was you better not, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, then your idea of God is that. And some churches actually molded a God to match the shame that you were hearing in the house. They were like, hey, you talk to your kids that way, here's that. And then that helps the parents feel okay with talking to their kids that way. I feel like nature shows us a different thing. And, and I think if you take evolution, which can even move past that, which is an always going up, constant magical thing, you're always expansive. Now, if you want to change a behavior and you're expanding, eventually your expansion just purges the pattern that would have had that behavior. You can't get rid of it. The pattern just leaves because you're now a new person. Every second, you're a new person. You know, when you, when you listen to silence long enough, you expand past the you that would have done this. There was always a you that was in some type of tunnel vision. But as you keep doing this inner work, you expand yourself more and more and more. And then you become here in the now. Right? As you become here in the now, the pattern that did those addictive behaviors might not exist anymore because you're now the person that's connected to the all that isness. As you expand to oneness, you don't have to shame yourself out of an old pattern. You just become what you are. You forgive it for real. Not like, okay, I'm over it. It's done. No, no, no. That's just, that's denial. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about really being present for all that is. And then at one point patterns that were fueled by your lack of consciousness, your lack of awareness are no longer fueled. They don't exist anymore and they leave. And people try to shame people. Some people are right now are making life decisions that are quick decisions to make shaming family members happy, right? I just don't wanna deal with my mom saying that. So, okay. We're making a short term decision out of shame. Sometimes shame makes short term decisions, right? Maybe to, to like stop your mom from yelling at you when you're a kid, you stop the behavior for a second. But if you've ever, you know, as I said, overeaten, you at one point I shame myself. And then sometimes there's a me that used to lash out at my shame. It was almost like there was a me that was like, I can eat what I want to the shame. Like there's a shame tunnel on top of you going, you're so bad, you're so bad. And then another me is like, you know what? I'm going to live my life. And then I was just this hybrid of either being shame or the F you to the shame. That's all I was. It's just the swing set. I'm bad. So, you know, repress yourself and, 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 you know, you need to change your patterns. You need to do this, but you're, you're, you know, why do you do that? You're so addictive. You're so whatever. It doesn't have to even be bad. It's like addictive. You're so addicted all the time. You're so, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? It's not the right answer. Why don't I actually answer it? Why am I doing that? Oh, because I want to feel love. Oh, weird. When I actually meditate, I feel love. Weirdly, with a smaller consciousness, I don't know about the love here. So I only feel love when I'm hanging out at a restaurant with a friend because that was my childhood. We only connected when we were at a restaurant. So I'm just looking for love and my smaller conscious story thinks that I can only find it in food. But you meditate long enough and you start to go, oh, I feel loved. I am love. Some of us think it's in a relationship. Some of us think it's in being alone and away from a relationship. What if you could just feel loved and those things are just clothes? They're different clothing. Your expansion is how you change. Your shame is how you temporarily change and then lash out at it and then stay the same.
And don't shame yourself for shaming yourself. Like if you hear this, don't be like, why did I shame myself for so long? Because that's just the pattern trying to stay alive. Instead, we just move in a way we're not used to where we just listen to now. And we give the shamer love too. Because the shamer that we might have inherited from teachers or church or your parents or whatever, they need love too. The parents that you might have had that shamed the shit out of you need love too. But you can't go up to them and be like, you need love too. No, that's not, they don't want to talk about that. Shaming voices usually are very scared to talk about themselves, like their inner introspective self. They just shame the outside so no one looks at them. You're bad. You do this all the time. You da da da. You da da da. If I, it's almost like if I preemptively start putting you down, then we don't have to look at how absolutely deplete of love I feel. how lost I am inside, how much I hate myself. I'm going to never own that. I'm going to look like I have all my shit together and make everyone around me feel bad, but I'm never going to just own that there's a wall and under that wall is a me that is just terrified, has never looked at myself, has no idea how to, is too, it would be death to the shamer to even get introspective or be open. I've now put myself in this point of no return where I can't even just go, hey, I'm lost. So I need to shame everyone into doing everything my way because the most horrifying thing is the idea that I'd be wrong. It would be death to everything I've ever built. So if you have a shamer voice in you, you've probably picked it up because you don't, you're not born with that. You, you learn that. Right. But it's, so it's someone else's. And as you, so Layla said it, can you set it down now? The answer is yes, but you can't egoically set it down. You have to become what you truly are. Right? How, I mean, how, once a butterfly becomes a butterfly, does it have to spend years getting over the caterpillar self? <laughs> right? When it even gets into the cocoon, is it putting down the caterpillar or is it moving towards the butterfly? There's no putting it down. There's just moving into what you are. I've spent a lot of hours recently meditating. I meditated huge this morning, just listening, 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 and just going, the only thing I crave is my expansion. That's what I crave in a relationship. That's what I crave in a friendship. I can get it directly the fastest with myself. I mean, I just sit there and listen and you see all the patterns that you thought were you five minutes ago suddenly have nothing to grab onto while I grab onto the love of the now, the constant, massive, expansive, true love of the now. And it's like I suddenly move into a oneness with, with energy that's so far past this and you know, I move into this place where I'm moving through the walls and I'm in this energy that is so much bigger than this. And I'm happy with the now and I'm, I'm almost purging the constant state of needing to be somewhere else. You know, something really interesting that happened yesterday, I was watching the movie Soul with Vivi. You know, we just were watching, a, I, I was walking in and out and I was doing a couple things. And it's part of the movie soul is that he, you know, wants to be this amazing piano player. And I've always wanted that too. And I was walking in the kitchen while she was watching it literally on a scene where he's playing gorgeous jazz music. And I thought the old me would want, hear that music and be like, I want to learn that. And I want to do that. 
And the new me just goes, why don't I just hear it? Like, why don't I just cut out the middleman that needs to also learn all this shit and just appreciate the chord is being played And I just started loving how beautiful it is and like losing the need to also do that. You know, so I don't have this guilt of untapped, you know, I could also play like that. So what? I could also really bring to the world a me that sees the beauty of the world and goes, isn't this amazing? It's not only what you can do in this world, it's what is in this world. Like, why do I have to go through five years of, I don't want to, I, I've done the training that I want to do and I do the training that I want to do and I'd rather just hear and appreciate gorgeous chords on the piano then need to be the one that played those exact same chords why do i need to be that and then it's can you feel the release there along with the appreciation along with the moment the moment right like i you can hear something and go i want that now you missed it because you want to be the one that does it You ever just see someone that's so beautiful and think, I want to date that person? Why don't you just appreciate them walking by? You ever smell a barbecue and go, I want to eat it? How about just appreciate the smell? Like, it's almost like once something amazing happens, it's like we we shut it off and say, that's egoically got to be all me. It doesn't. That is me. The more I appreciate the now, the more I go, that piano did come through me. Maybe a different antenna played it because all I am is the antenna. All the, I'm sorry, all the body is, is the antenna. All I am is the all that isness. The body is the antenna. I'm not the body. I'm the all that isness. The body is my perception mechanism. It's how I see it. And I'm seemingly changing it every day. The longer I meditate, the more I realize every amazing thing you've ever seen, just so you know, you did that. This whole thing is your dream. So you don't have to only look at a gorgeous piece of art and go, nothing matters until I do that kind of art. How about if that inspires you, you go paint, but paint that moment. Don't try to get somewhere else. Paint what's coming through you. Sing what's coming through you. Play what chords you do know. Fine. But also, holy shit to what is available out there. There's a musician I've talked about, Jacob Collier. I think he's one of the greatest musicians, if not the greatest that's ever, ever existed. He's so amazing. And he's like 25 or something. Why do I need to be like him? Why don't I be Kyle? This Kyle is experiencing an awareness that says, holy shit, this is all us. This is my unique voice coming through, through my experiences. This is what the universe wants. It's not screaming at me. The universe isn't screaming at me. I need you to play like that. We already got that. I already, the universe, if you look at the universe, like I already did that. Why do you need to be that? Right? So why do you need to be anywhere other than where you are? And and this is another reason why shame is so silly. You were supposed to do what you did to learn what you needed to learn to grow. Shame looks through a very small lens and says, you should be different than you are. I'm just, all shame is, is an argument with God. A long, stuck argument with God. (laughs) 
can you just appreciate something without needing more from it? If you go to lunch with someone today that you've always had a crush on, can you just enjoy that you're having that moment with them and not be in constant strategy of how to get them to say yes to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, like can you just be exactly where you are with all your skills that you're at and be okay with where you are. If God wants you to grow on those things, you just will. Right. But there's so much more to see. There's so much more here now to see. And the more you do this, the more you're not in constant, constant fear about what the hell is coming up in the future. And I guarantee you, your consciousness is changing the future. Because you're moving to an uncontrollable, in a good way, frequency. It's almost like your shame is a way of staying at the small consciousness. It's like, I'm scared to become the evolution of what I truly am, but I don't want to do that behavior anymore. So I'm going to both keep you the type of energy that would do it, but tell it it better not. No, no, no. Good job with everything you've ever done. Expand. It's like keeping ice frozen while screaming ice, it should be water. You get what I'm saying? It's like you're keeping it frozen, screaming at ice, you should be water. Well, stop freezing me. Because shame creates fear. It's a, it's a dense energy, just like ice, right? Ice is water. You want ice to turn into water? You let it melt. Just let nature do what it does. But shame is like a freezer getting on ice, saying, turn into water. You're keeping me ice. As you hold that space of the love that you are, you also become the possibility and the reminder for other people. You never have to tell anyone to do anything different. But you're holding space accidentally without even trying to for the them that exists on the other side of their frozen patterns. But you love them no matter what they do. So there's no judgment anymore. They, no one will change from you shaming them, right? And you won't change from you shaming you. Real change happens when the pattern no longer exists. Most of the actions we've made that we don't like anyway came from being shamed in the first place. Like a lot of the things we don't like, they were things you wouldn't have ever probably done had you just had parents that literally just made sure you survived while helping the thriving you just be born. Like just let the thriving part of that person come out, right? The holds, if, if, you're, if you were in your creativity from the beginning, now I don't say it for guilt. In fact, that's what we're here to do now. You just bring it back out. It doesn't take time to fix this. It takes awareness. It just takes awareness and it's instant. You feel that? Just takes awareness. That's why you never need to say to yourself sentences like, how long is this going to take? Or I thought I was over this already. You're still working in the time and effort frequency. Do you get what I mean by that? When you're trying to change something, you're like, how many, how much longer does this take? I thought for sure this would be done. No, no, no. You're choosing to stay on the ice low frequency that includes time and effort. Switch to awareness. Awareness right now is the truth of what you are. This is awareness. Awareness. 